So for this question, we're looking at which of the following statements are true in regards to rigor mortis. So obviously rigor mortis uh, sets in after uh, someone has died. So it's just things to look for uh, in the body as well as uh, what actually causes rigor mortis, that spasm of, of the skeletal muscles and then other muscles and, and organs are spasm as well. But the main thing that you visually see is the uh, spasticity of the skeletal muscles. So let's see which of the following are true. So the first two just have to do with uh, how long the body has been deceased. And for most textbooks, uh, they're looking at the body's been dead for more uh, than two hours in order for rigor mortis to set in, which makes number one statement true, and less than an hour would be a false statement, so that would be something we would cross off. Uh, it usually has not set in uh, in under an hour, and different things do take into account the physiological condition of the individual, uh, temperature, pH, uh, uh, the amount of uh, humidity, uh, any type of uh, other conditions that could accelerate or decelerate, but these are the averages that most textbooks talk about. So number three and four has to do with ATP uh, levels in the body after death. And as you can imagine, once the body dies, it no longer produces ATP. ATP is produced uh, via cellular respiration and that no longer takes uh, place once there's no oxygen uh, present or sugar being added to the body. So it is caused actually by a lack of ATP in the body and we'll discuss that here uh, more in a bit. And uh, so number four would be incorrect or too much ATP would be an incorrect statement. Uh, number five, it is caused by too much calcium in the sarcoplasm. That is a correct uh, statement. So what actually happens when the body dies? The ATP is used up and no more ATP is produced. So uh, what happens? The sarcoplasm reticulum can no longer uh, pump uh, calcium from the sarcoplasm into the sarcoplasm reticulum because that requires ATP because it's pumping against the concentration gradient. So once there's no ATP left, the ca uh, calcium just goes down the concentration gradient and leaks out of the sarcoplasm reticulum into the sarcoplasm. And uh, as you remember, once calcium is in the sarcoplasm, it's going to bind to troponin, which causes the tropomyosin to shift. Myosin will bind to actin. Right. Once it binds to actin, that's the muscle contraction. So this is happening throughout the skeletal muscles in the body. And uh, as a side note, ATP again is needed to break that cross bridge. So without ATP, the cross bridges cannot be broken. Uh, so the muscles contract and no cannot relax. And that which comes to number six here is it can last up to 48 hours and that is a true statement and again uh, physiological condition and pH and temperature all play a role in how long it lasts but that is about average it can last up to 48 hours and again that's just because uh, the muscles contract there's no AT ATP to break the cross bridges at 48 hours enzymes both within the body and enzymes produced by bacteria start to uh, decompose the body and break the muscle fibers therefore breaking the cross bridges so uh, one three uh, five and six are correct so if we go to the bottom here uh, one three five and six is a and uh, which would be the correct answer.